So here we are in the home of Judith Blackstone and Zoran Josipovic. And uh, most of you know by now that my favorite subject is sustainability. And the reason I'm interested in what this couple does is that um, they have results from their work that point in very certain direction about our conditions for reaching sustainable people that could finally develop a sustainable social context. Zoran, I would like you to start to mention something about your work in this respect. So I do research um, of uh, meditation and uh, contemplative states at NYU and also at Non-Duality Institute, uh, which is our um, umbrella organization for both uh, researching non-duality and teaching non-duality. And the kind of research that I'm doing uh, involves uh, scanning people who are very experienced mm -hmm. in non-duality um, uh, with fMRI, uh, in fMRI and also MEG scanners. And, and non-duality, by the way, what, could you put a few words on what that state of consciousness is? So, um, uh, to put it simply, we can say that non-duality is a, a, a unity state of consciousness. Uh, in which uh, fragmentation between the self, self and other, between, between subject and object, or between inside and outside, uh, is relaxed. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a, a kind of a habitual fragmentation that underlies much of our uh, usual experience. And in contemplative traditions, uh, it uh, is considered to underlie um, the problems that we have, that mm -hmm. we experience. And the, the and social uh, that's right. the lit. both psychological and social problems that we have okay. um, are often analyzed as a result of that duality. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what I'm particularly interested in is what is the level of uh, human consciousness or our mind mm -hmm. that realizes this non-duality. And uh, um, one way to understand it, and one one um, result that we have seen in our studies. Um, is that uh, human brain can be seen to be organized into two large systems. One system deals with the external environment and uh, uh, with our experience of performing a task, uh, something that we're focused on. Some, uh, and then the other system deals with um, internal experience, uh, the, the self-referential experience. Hmm. So when we uh, perform the tasks, uh, generally the parts of the brain that have to do with the uh, attention and uh, processing external environment are uh, more active and the parts that have to do with ourselves are suppressed mm -hmm. uh, and vice versa. When we think about ourselves uh, then uh, uh, the self-related areas or intrinsic system is uh, more active mm -hmm. and the other one is more uh, deactivated. Um, so initial forms of meditation, the beginning kinds of meditation, uh, as well as some um, more advanced meditation that have to do with fixating in a particular states, tend to emphasize the extrinsic system and de-emphasize the uh, intrinsic system or de-emphasize the self-referential system. Mm -hmm. But what we find with so the... So more uh, aware of what is happening... Outside. Outside. And, and less than less inside. inside. Yes. And that's... Uh, only in the beginning. So that's yeah. a beginning kind of a, a level. And then as we progress, what uh, happens is that in the non-duality, when we are relaxed in it, and we're not fixed in a particular uh, state, we are, we are there, then there is a more harmonious integration between the internal and external experience. And we say technically that there is an increase in the functional connectivity between these two systems. So you can become sort of present with both what is outside and inside exactly. at the same time. Exactly. You're more aware yes, of a bigger reality. That's right. And you don't edit uh, either aspect of your experience. You mm -hmm. don't, de don't deny outside reality, you don't deny internal re reality. Mm. Because what we do uh, often as we get uh, fearful is that some perceptions, some uh, judgments or some feelings are a little bit, a little bit too much for us to carry in the moment. So we sort of suppress them or disregard. 
or impressions from the outside or emotions in the inside. Yes, Judy would be the best to talk about that. Judith. Yes, yes. You have another background. Uh, the work I'm doing, um, it's called uh, the realization process, and it's it's a way of approaching non-dual awakening by inhabiting the internal space of the body. Uh, when we um, are not just aware of our bodies, but actually living within the body as a whole, then the created barrier, the created boundary between inner and outer naturally dissolves. Um, and we get to a very, very fine level of consciousness uh, pervading both our own form, our own being, and everything around us at once. So that's an, an actual experience, an actual realization, not just an idea, but an actual experience of this oneness of inner and outer experience, of this oneness of inner and outer life. Uh, now, when that boundary dissolves, uh, we find ourselves uh, not just at the mercy of the outside world, because this very fine consciousness is pervading our own form as well. Pervading is, in another word, please. We're, we're made of it. We feel that we're made ah. of this consciousness ah. all the way through oh. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And everything around us is also made of this consciousness. So you look at a cup and you see the cup as, as substantial, as, as, as made of clay, yeah. and yet at the same time, it has a transparency, as if you could, as if you could see through it. And the same with our own body. Right? We, we are both substantial and really here, and yet we're open. We feel clear through open all the way through our own body, all the way through ourselves. And this we can get to really rather easily by, through a practice of inhabiting the internal space of the body. Mm -hmm. Much of the boundary, the created boundary, between inner and outer is based on fear. It's based on uh, painful experiences in childhood in which we had to reinforce a sense of separateness and dampen the impact of external experience, hmm. dampen the impact of our environment on ourselves. And so we created a boundary between inner and outer. Survival mechanisms That's right. in the psychological, psychological realm. That's right. And it's a constructed boundary, yeah. whereas our actual nature, our true nature, yeah. our unconstructed nature, is without that boundary. Mm -hmm. So our unconstructed nature is based on love rather than fear, based on openness. And being a part of existence. That's right. On every level. That's right. Not, no separation, really. No separation, really. <laughs> yeah. and, and this affects our identity pretty dramatically, I, I would say. That's right. Instead of knowing ourselves as a separate person that we have to uh, protect against the outside, we know ourselves as this clear consciousness, this one consciousness. But it's not just that we lose ourselves, for in fact, we ourselves are made of this consciousness and all of the basic qualities of our being are revealed as we inhabit our body. So our actual love, actual love that's right there in our chest, that's not created, and not even in reaction to anything, but actually wells up from the core of ourselves. Actual sense of power, pure power, like a waterfall, pure power in our belly. Mm. Uh, sense of, of sexuality, sense of, of potential to speak, of understanding. These are, these are qualitative aspects that we can experience. So we know ourselves as a separate being at the same time mm as we know ourselves as one with everything. And I got to re get to remember uh, when I was doing Ki Aikido, which is rather a dance than a fighting mm -hmm. uh, thing, and where I become so present with myself and the attacker uh, that I'm able to turn the whole movement into a dance that we do together. That's right. And I can always take over the, the mental direction and guide it to the other person. And I almost don't have to guide even the body. So it's, a, it's an equal dance, right? It's an equal dance between yeah. 
between parts. Uh, and there you get your, your spontaneity, you know, that spontaneous, authentic, you know, you know we, we behave authentically because we're behaving spontaneously, mm. right? And that, yeah. that responsiveness to the environment wells up in us yeah. spontaneously. Uh, when we know ourselves as this one unified consciousness. Mm. So has that, how does that relate to sort of our <laughs> inner essence? I love to talk about fear and love. Uh, does it connect to some, some inner aspect, Absol source, essence? Absolutely. It's a, it, you know, I don't know if there actually is an essence, that's a metaphysical question, but there's certainly an experience of essence, an experience of very, very fine, a unified consciousness that we can experience both as complete emptiness and as presence. And oneness. And the more we, the more we know ourselves as that essence, the more we, we experience that everything around us, everyone and even everything, is made of the same essence. So mm. naturally, in relationship with another human being, we feel that continuity, essence to essence. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that happens, that happens naturally, as we know ourselves as that essence. Yeah. And then uh, me getting happy is not a matter of just me getting happy. That's a matter of all of us getting happy, right? It certainly <laughs> helps. Or, all of us are already happy, we just have to realize it. <laughs> okay. 